Standing high above the clouds on the island of Hawaii, Mauna Kea is known to millions around the world. But what this Mauna embodies and has come to symbolize is grounded first and foremost in its familial and spiritual significance for Native Hawaiians. Hi. Mauna Kea is our oldest kupuna. Wakea, the god of the sky, and his mate Papa, or Papa Hanaumoku, the earth, they created our landscapes, and our old chant specifically says, Hanau ka mauna he makahiapo kapuna kea. Born is the mountain, and it's the oldest child of Wakea. In addition to being home to many native Hawaiian deities, this revered mauna is also home to many native species of flora and fauna, and even a few endemic, meaning that this mauna is their only home. The different species that exist here, you know, endemic species like mamane, um, we have iliahi, koa, nile as the main tree species. And then we have a, a plethora of shrub species, aveoveo, ali, ulei, ilima, pukiave, throughout the span from 5,000 and even lower up to skyline and, and, and above. And can't forget the crown flower on the top, mahinahina, such a beautiful meakanu. And garnered by the beautiful palila, a manu oivi that no longer exists anywhere else in the world. Due in no small part to this precious natural environment, one of Mauna Kea's most recent wonders has been the development of the world's most scientifically productive collection of astronomical observatories. The secret is Mauna Kea. How do, it gives the observatories, if you will, an incredible competitive edge with regard to all of the observatories around the world. That's traceable to the unusual shape of Mauna Kea as a big shield volcano that's 14,000 feet tall. The very smooth, we call it laminar flow of air from the trade winds over the top of Mauna Kea. That means we have built in much clearer images, much what we call seeing, much better seeing than other observatories around the world. Hundreds of astronomers have had the honor and privilege of contributing to the research done from Mauna Kea for decades, which has led not only to personal and corporate accolades and recognition, but the fulfillment of a lifelong draw to the wonders of the heavens. My passion for astronomy started really young. Uh, I grew up out in the middle of the desert in Australia, where it's so, so close to the galaxy, you can read a book by starlight. And I think that nearly every astronomer, and I think nearly everyone can remember that first time when you looked up at the stars and you just went, wow. The stories of our universe have been traveling here for millions of years. It seems a tragedy that all of this light has arrived here, uh, having all of these incredible adventures and we don't look up and catch it. For me, it, it's almost a, uh, a requirement of my soul that I build things that collect some of these stories and not let them be lost. That's where my passion comes from. Mauna Kea's storied past extends even to how the state holds title to these lands today, title rooted in Kingdom of Hawaii lands that by constitutional law, the state holds in trust for Native Hawaiians and the general public. I definitely don't think most people in Hawaii, including our decision makers, appreciate how the federal and state government came to own most of its public lands, including the lands on Mauna Kea. These lands are both ceded lands and public land trust lands that Native Hawaiians continue to assert claims to and that are held in trust for Native Hawaiians as one of the public land trust beneficiaries. And so today, there are various government agencies charged with managing thousands of acres on Mauna Kea, which, again, are comprised of public land trust lands and ceded lands. For the collective of agencies and divisions, and specifically their staff who spend their days atop the Mauna maintaining the facilities and roadways and helping visitors, one of the critical priorities is ensuring everyone's safety. Taking care of the mountain the rangers and the VIS staff were the first line of defense. We're there to inform the visitors of what to do, but it falls on everybody's hands. It's everybody's kuleana to take care of, of this delicate mountain. 
This awe-inspiring mauna means so much to so many, but for those who see and know Mauna Kea as ohana, as a space that demands reverence and respect, the duty to protect and ensure this sense of veneration is what has and continues to draw them to these slopes. From a very young age, we would always spend time up on the flanks of the mountain, not necessarily ever at the top because that wasn't where our, our kuleana was. But we had kuleana to the, to the fact that the, the space that we access fed us. And so when you think about that, there's a reciprocity, right? So our responsibility then is to make sure and to ensure as uh, stewards, if you will, but more especially as individuals and families who have a pilina to the, to the mountain, to be able to give back for any reason. Grounded in this Hawaiian way of viewing the world and the importance of pilina, or relationships, giving voice to various groups who have a sincere aloha for this mauna was at the genesis of developing the world's only indigenous bilingual science center right here in Hilo, Hawaii. Imiloa exists today because of Mauna Kea. I think because of all that Mauna Kea stands for, the origins and the connections that it provides us as Hawaiian people, we are providing a place of education for all to come and access and hopefully encourage future generations to continue along our deep Hawaiian value and tradition really of exploration, which is where Imi Loa, the name of the center, came from. And with all that this place, this mauna, has come to mean to so many, from its cultural and spiritual significance to its rich natural resources and landscape that hosts the most pristine views of the heavens, most important is our kuleana to these future generations in how we malama and aloha ya mauna kea ku kila kila. <laughs>